Let's go through the mechanism here. This step falls in. I think you actually worked it out uh, perfectly. That's good. You were uh, puzzled at one step, but you worked it out. I think uh, I think you worked that all, all out correctly. Good. Yeah, that's quite good. Well, let's just review that, but that looks good to me. What, what's the name of this type of reaction? Uh, uh, base catalyzed hydrolysis. Yeah, very good. This is a base catalyzed. What type of functional group is this? Um, this is an, uh, an amine. Yeah, so this is a base catalyzed amide hydrolysis. We, in the previous example, we did an acid catalyzed hydrolysis, so it's logical now to do a base. Now, even though this is a base, we're actually not using it to deprotonate anybody, we just use it like a nucleophile. We've seen that in previous things. If you wanted to, you could use this like a base and have it deprotonate the water, but that would just give you another hydroxide anyway, so you might as well just have this hydroxide attack. Um, now, at this step, um, let's see, the uh, came in. Now, in this case, you did not protonate this before it left. Um, you just had it leave like this without protonating, uh, and, uh, and that's good. You can't protonate this until it leaves, or otherwise it would have a positive charge, which is not consistent with our conditions. We can't protonate this uh, in this picture, because that would give it a positive charge, but under basic conditions, all the charges have to be neutral or negative. So this is good that this left. Now, um, 
Nitrogens are usually terrible leaving groups. Remember, that's why this is so unreactive. So it's a little surprising that the nitrogen can leave here when it's neutral. Neutral nitrogen doesn't seem like a good leaving group. Do you remember what's the driving force for this step? What is it that's kicking this leaving group off even though it's not a good leaving group? The molecule wants to, I mean, the oxygen wants to return to a carbonyl. Excellent, excellent. That's exactly right. We've seen that molecules like having carbonyls so much that they'll even kick off bad leaving groups in order to reform the carbonyl. So even though the neutral nitrogen is a poor leaving group, it, get, it gets kicked off by the power of reforming the carbonyl. And then um, you, you picked up on something that most people don't think about. You know that both the carboxylic acid and the amine have two possible forms, and you have to be consistent with the conditions. Well, under basic conditions, they should both be in their less protonated form. So this can't be the final, uh, the final product because it has too many, it has too many protons. Um, and this can't be the final product. It certainly needs another proton over here. And you uh, very efficiently used this to deprotonate this. So this is, the, this is the, you worked out the best way you could do this step. This certainly needs another proton. We don't want to leave it with a minus charge. Um, the two possible forms this might have been ended up with were neutral or sometimes positive. Positive wouldn't be consistent, though, with the negative conditions. So the neutral is right. So this is, uh, this is uh, very good. You want to compare these with what we had under acidic conditions. Under acidic conditions, these would have been the final products. Under acidic conditions, they would both be in their protonated forms, but you correctly saw that under uh, basic conditions, they should be in their less protonated forms. Good. Yeah, that's good. You worked that out. Again, we need heat for amide hydrolyses under either acidic or basic conditions because amides are not very um, good, uh, are not very reactive because this is a very poor leaving group. But let's come up with a name for this. This would be a good test question, though, the name for this. How would we name that? Um, let's see here. N uh, phenyl acetamide. That's terrific. That's the common name, but people would usually use the common name here. Very good. So we know that we treat this like a substituent, and we need to say its location. Well, it's on the nitrogen, so it's N-phenyl. And we know that except for acetone, acid always means two carbons. And this has two carbons, so this would be the common name. The IUPAC name would be N-phenylethanamide. But actually, that's rarely used, um, so it's good that you knew this name. How about this? We know this is a carboxylate. A carboxylate salt. So right. Can't... Which particular? What would be the the, the full? What would be a, the name for this? That's a little tricky. We haven't practiced that as much. Sodium carboxylate. That's right. But we have to say which carboxylate. This is a two-carbon carboxylate. Um, Just like we had to say what amide this was. We have to say. Yeah, we, we haven't covered that that much. Um, it's two carbons, so it would be sodium. The IUPAC name would be sodium ethanoate. In IUPAC, carboxylase use the OA suffix, kind of like esters. But that's not surprising because this kind of looks like an ester. Okay, so um, the IUPAC name would be sodium ethanoate, and the common name would be sodium acetate. The acet shouldn't surprise us, because acet means two carbons. The one tricky thing is the suffix is a little bit different. Instead of saying O8, we just say 8. So most people would actually call this sodium acetate. The most common name for this would be sodium acetate. Okay. There's also, um, it's also uh, uh, a way to name an amine like this, but your class hasn't covered amines yet, so we won't need to go over this yet. We'll be going over that in the future. Okay, um, and again, you should be able to do this without going through the mechanism as well. How could you do this without the whole mechanism? Well, you need to realize that this is going to bring in an OH group, and then you need to recognize that under basic conditions, it'll end up deprotonated. And you have to recognize that when this leaves, um, it's going to gain an extra proton. But it won't gain uh, yet another proton because these are under basic conditions. Oh, uh, 
not very important. But uh, it's a good time, time saver to just use pH rather than always drawing out the ring. That way we can save ourselves some time, pH for phenol. Uh, 